Zero factorial is 1, or at least that's how we define it. But why? One view of factorials is factorial means the number of ways to arrange a number of objects. N factorial means the number of ways to arrange n objects. How many ways are there to arrange zero objects? Well, there's no way to arrange zero objects. That is, there's only one way to do it. You don't. So zero factorial is one. Maybe you're looking for something a little more arithmetic. Another way we define factorials is through its recursive definition. n factorial is n times n minus one factorial. So four factorial, which is four times three times two times one, is the same as four times three factorial. Three factorial is three times two times one, which is three times two factorial. Two factorial is two times one, which is two times one factorial. And one factorial is one times zero factorial. So it has to be that zero factorial is one. How about with combinations? n choose k, as we say, is the number of ways to select k objects from n objects where order doesn't matter. Here's the formula for it. Well, what if we select all n objects from the n objects? Think about taking all 52 cards from a deck of 52. The combination tells us how many ways to do that. Well, there's only one. You take every card. But here's the formula. If we substitute in n and n into the formula, in the denominator, we're going to get a zero factorial. Yet this equation has to be one. We have to conclude zero factorial is one. The famous gamma function. Here's its definition. Why the gamma function? Because the gamma function generalizes the factorial function. n factorial is the same as gamma of n plus one. So what should zero factorial be? Well, according to the gamma function, it should be gamma of 1, just substitute 1 into this formula, and a little bit of calculus computing this integral. What do we get? Of course, it's 1. A more subtle reason we should define 0 factorial to be 1 is for the same reason we define a number to the 0 power to be 1. This is called an empty product, the product of nothing at all. This is essentially the neutral element of multiplication, which is one. The neutral element of addition is zero, and so if we were to define zero factorial as that, we might mess some things up. Of course, also, there's many formulas and series that rely on zero factorial to be one. Take the famous series definition for e to the x. This sum is only going to be true if zero factorial is one. My personal favorite reason why zero factorial should be one is what else do you want zero factorial to be? Do you want it to be zero? If you do want it to be zero, why? Is it more convenient to have zero factorial be anything other than one? I'd really like to know in the comments. I genuinely don't know. While the mathematical community has definitely decided zero factorial is one, there is another number that is up for debate. This video shares my thoughts on the most controversial number in math, zero to the zero power. Check it out right now. I'll see you in that one.